Good morning. We are live here at the Center for Spiritual Living Princeton. And I'm just checking in to make sure it's working. It says it's working. Great. Enjoy our service. In the Thank you, Reverend Rich. Welcome. Glad to see you all and glad to see you all. I know that you're there. So we are a loving, healing, inclusive community that teaches and practices the principles of the science of mind for the spiritual growth and well-being of ourselves and the world. And we take that and the world part pretty seriously because we know as we grow, so does everything around us because we are all one. So welcome, we do have a few announcements. Next week, beloved Regina will be doing the service and her title is Substance, God's Gift to Us. And on June 23rd, after the service, we are having a membership meeting and light snacks will be available. It is after the service. So again, thank you for being here. And as Reverend Rich said so eloquently in his invocation, it is about connection. And so today, kind of playing off last week, we are going to practice the connection. You know, it's sort of like when you have your phone and you don't have any connection, but sometimes it's ignorance because you don't know what you're doing and sometimes you learn. And so we practice. And no matter how experienced you are in the practice, there's, we're in our human form, there's still so much more to go. So I'm grateful here today that we have this opportunity to practice together. So it's called the practice of awakening. Last week was opening to awakening. And we talked about five ways, pathways to recognizing that we want to open. So I just want to make sure that you all have paper and pens. And those of you in virtual land, you may have an opportunity to write. So if you would like to get a pen and a paper, that would be fine. 
And if we happen to be reading something and you don't have access to that, no worries, just listen to the words as if they are your own. So why do we practice awakening and what are we awakening to? Well, as Richard said, Reverend Rich, my husband's rich, I get mixed up. I have so many riches in my life. I have such richness in my life. <laughs> Anyway, as Reverend Rich said so eloquently, there's the one, the only one. You can call it God. You can call it infinite, invisible. You can call it the divine. You can call it source. You can call it quantum field. And it's just what it is. And we awaken our connection to that because it is everywhere. As Reverend Rich said, there is not a spot where it is not. Well, then what does that tell us quite logically? If there's not a spot where it is not, it's got to be within us, too. And when we awaken, we tap into the knowing that it's there. And sometimes we forget to tap into the awakening. And that's what these pathways are about. Noticing what you're noticing. What are you feeling? And one of the things we talked about was feeling an urge, feeling a longing. And when you long for something, you kind of feel like you're missing out, like you're missing something. But we're not missing anything because right here within us, right here around us is the one. And those qualities that the one has, well, if the one has the qualities and the one is in us, then we have those qualities. And what are some of the qualities that we like to claim? Can anybody shout out a quality that we like to claim that clarity, love, Health, wisdom, harmony, balance. These are all ours. They are a gift from the one to each of us as the one expressed. So we are going to practice that today. This is a workshop. And I invite you as we practice to really release any notion of any thing that might feel that you can't do it or that it's too hard. Just be with it, be with the flow of the practice. Because when we practice and we awaken to that presence, we feel that union with God. It is when we are out of sync, out of that divine flow, when we are maybe upset, maybe feeling pain, maybe angry. We forget, we feel separated. And that's where that longing comes from, feeling separated. Do you know, if you think about someone that you love, I have two children, one's in California, one's in Vermont. It's hard not to feel separated, but I can, if I close my eyes, just remember. So that's what I invite you to do today, to really awaken to that what's already inside of you. So we're going to practice. We're going to step out of our own way and let the universal power do its thing. So I said this already. If we do a group reading, oh, we're frozen. No. I guess I'm not going to. Mm -hmm. It is, it's being recorded. I'm sorry if you get stopped here, there and there, you in the virtual land, but all right. So we went over these five pathways last week and one was longing. One is feeling that urge. Do you ever feel like you're stuck in the same old rut and you feel like you're missing something and there's got to be more? Well, that's an urging. So our first practice is we're going to invoke, we're going to do our own invocation. So I invite you to take out your paper and we're going to read this together. It starts out with, oh, infinite presence. You'll see it says awakening to longing or opening to longing. And we are going to feel into this as we read it. Let's do this together. Oh, infinite presence, I invite you to make yourself real to me to awaken in me the ability to see the truth 
that I am missing nothing in my life but the feeling of my connection to you. I am opening to experiencing my deep connection to your loving presence in, as, and through me. And as you sit in those words, I invite you to close your eyes. Mm, and take a nice, slow, loving, beautiful, life-giving breath. And that is the presence because the presence is everywhere. And I'm going to read these words. I want you to take them in as if they are your own. And there will be some music afterwards and just sit in the quiet presence of this beautiful music. I feel whole as the longing for deep connection is quenched with the river of spirit flowing in as and through me. In deep recognition of the spirit within, I realize that whatever in me is focusing on separation from this infinite good, whatever is focusing on negative thoughts, images, or feelings is hereby released, dissolved through my spiritual knowing. I feel a divine communion with the infinite presence. And if that longing returns, I remember, I am opening. I am opening. My heart is ready to receive. So as we sit in this opening space, the space of awakening, I invite you to take a nice deep breath and find your way back to the awareness of this celebration today, opening your eyes when you are ready. So the last, uh, the second pathway that we talked about was regret. We can relate to holding ourselves hostage because of the past. In fact, I was thinking about that this morning and it occurred to me, everybody in the world must experience regret because there are so many songs written about it. And I got to thinking yesterday by the Beatles, Harry Chapin, Cats in the Cradle, regretting that he didn't spend time with his son, um, back to December by Taylor Swift, that's current, but ooh, that's a tough one. And actually, I'll share with you that my son is kind of going through a really challenging time right now. And what do I find myself doing? Awakening myself to regret of things I might have done better or could have done better. And these do not serve us. They're not the truth of us. So we have practices that help us release this idea of regret and stepping into the future, that, which is the now, meaning the future from the past, which is the now. 
We don't need that past to rear its ugly head, but when it does, it's an opportunity to remember the truth. So our next practice is that we are going to do a treatment. So our per first practice was a meditation. We learned so many practices at the center. We are going to stand together and read a treatment together. So let us stand up. And those of you at home, enjoy the treatment. All right, here we go. Recognizing that there is one life, one creative power for good, and knowing that that life is my life now, I am feeling my deep union with its power. I am open and awakened to the possibility that I can start over again. The past is the past. The presence is now. I move forward in freedom. I release old beliefs and thought patterns to continue toward a deeper connection with the divine. I drop all sense of lack or limitation from my thought and every belief that I have ever had in negation or fear. I know that nothing from the past can inhibit the flow of divine action. Spirit expresses itself in perfect freedom. Yes, I am conscious of my union with spirit. I know that I am an individualization of the truth, the truth of wholeness. I empty myself of any and everything that denies this. I begin anew and in gratitude, knowing these words are in the loving law that can only say yes, I release them, and so it is. You might want to stay standing because we have some musical ministry going right now. There was a time in my life I thought I had to do it all for myself. Didn't know the way God was. Didn't know the word of God was in hand. But now I can say Struggling just to make it through another day. You've got to let it all go. You've got to let it all go. And this is what you say. I really, I let it go. I let the spirit turn my life. My heart. we're standing up, let's take a moment to notice and recognize the presence of God in each one. So I invite you simply to put your hairs in, uh, hands in prayer part, uh, posture. Namaste. I recognize the light in you, the light in me. So look around the room and just spread your light to everybody.
and to you too. Thank you. All right. So the third pathway, have a seat. You know, um, it is said that when you sit for too long, you start zoning out. So I don't know if that's true, but I think that it's a pleasant thing to get up once in a while and get your blood flowing. We might do it again, felt good. So the third pathway that we talked about last week was the pathway to health. Is there anyone here who is stubborn? <laughs> is there anyone here who is not stubborn? Is there anyone here who thinks they are always right? I know I'm always right. <laughs> and who thinks they can do it alone right now? So sometimes it's really hard to ask for help. And yet when we find ourselves needing help, help is always present. Direction is ever available. That one source, that one spirit, that one light that is within us, it's always guiding us. We just have to, you know, step out of our own need to be right, our own need to think we can do it ourselves. So we're going to do another practice, which is a practice that I love. It's called posture prayers. Um, anybody that's taken any classes here, we learn them. Um, and they are actually based on an ancient metaphysical practice, which goes like this. I'm going to read it. What the body does, the soul remembers. What the soul remembers, it does to the body. So it's a cycle. So if we get it into our muscle memory, into our body, the soul remembers it. And... Um, here I have a nice list about posture prayers and the postures that we're going to be using, I'm going to cover first. There's this posture. Everybody put your arms out like this. This posture facilitates the release of attachments to false beliefs. But also, how do you feel when you're in this posture? Expansive, opening, right? So that's posture one. Then we have this posture. And this posture is the posture of being open to gratitude and affirmation of our own being, which is that light within us. And then we have this posture. Now, how do you feel in this posture? Receiving. We are ready to receive our good. Isn't that a nice feeling? Let's just hold that feeling for a moment, that posture. You'll see sometimes during services, people stand in this position just naturally. And then our final posture for our little posture prayer is this. And this is the posture of reverence. Where we are surrendering to the universal expression of life. So let's take out our piece of paper, if you can keep it on your lap so that you can, well, you don't really need it because I will let you repeat after me. So let's not need the paper. So we're gonna bring our arms out to the side. Repeat after me. Awaken in me the willingness to turn toward. Awaken in me the willingness to turn toward. The spirit within me for help. The spirit within me for help. I put myself and any cares I have. Put myself and any cares I have. In the hands of divine intelligence. Let's do that one more time. Awaken in me the willingness to turn toward. Awaken in me the willingness to turn toward. The spirit within me for help. The spirit within me for help. 
I put myself and any cares I have in the hands of divine intelligence. Let's just hold that space. And while you are in this space, I invite you to take your pen and paper, seeing if you can maintain the space. And you will notice on the paper, the first three pathways that we have practiced listening to. I invite you to think for a moment and listen. Is there anything that you would like to know or need to know or need to do about regret or longing or having to be right and forgetting to ask for help? Just be with that presence. Think about that and let it flow. You can write it underneath the paragraph. Just a few words, thoughts, longing, something you want to strive for something you are now thinking, hmm, I want to do this more, or set an intention about that. I am going to listen to the longing in my life and remember to practice. Whatever comes to you is perfect. just take a few deep breaths feeling gratitude for any thoughts that came to you anything meaningful that you discovered and bring yourself back to the presence of this space and this celebration this workshop And speaking of posture prayers, I have a little visual aid that I forgot to show you before we started. But I was participating in posture prayers online with a group that I um, am part of that works with the Marsha and Lloyd. um, Marsha Sutton, Lloyd Strom's uh, information. And this is the piece of paper that's all about posture prayers. Now, If you may notice, we all light candles when we participate. And um, this paper really spoke to me. (laughs) And it reminded me, and I'm going to share this with you, because aren't memories wonderful when you can really look back at them and see what they did for you? I was a rascal. I was a tomboy. I like nothing better than doing things that my parents would have gotten heart attacks from had they known I was doing them. But back then, who knew? 
bye, go outside and play. And I would ride my bike down the treacherous roads with my arms out, not using the steering wheels. We would ride to the river and we would swing into the river on a rope and who cared how fast it was rushing. And my cousin Randy and I had an affinity for fire. True story. I'm gonna guess we were probably 10 or 11. And we would light fires. And I mean, light fires. Now, never were we going to let those fires get out of control. And that was the art, to learn to command the fire. And one day we could not command the fire. And we were very, very scared. We were in a field where three houses joined. And I just went, no, 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 God, no, 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 God, no, 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 God. And the wind came and I thought it was going to blow it in the direction of the houses, but it blew it in the direction where the stones and stuff were and it started to dissipate so that we could put it out ourselves. But I learned two things from that. Maybe there was something about this God, you know, because at that time I was going to a, a, a Presbyterian Protestant, some kind of church. I think it was Protestant. And I went because I was supposed to, but I didn't really start to delve into it. So that's sort of like one time where I thought, ah, you know, there must be something to this. So I'll never forget that. And the second thing is that um, I would never do that again. I learned my lesson. Um, anyway, that I don't know why I share that. It just came to me and it's just another example of maybe serendipity, you know, maybe paying attention to things that happen in your life. And you look backwards and you go, oh, that might have been a stepping stone. I bet we have many when we think about them. So that's my story and I'm sticking to it. So the fourth pathway we talked about was awakening to love. We all strive to be loved. We all want to be loved. And we really all want to be loving. And I don't know about you, but when I am challenged, I sometimes step into not being loving. And that only means that we're forgetting again that our the divine love is ever present. Love is really God in action. And we are always in the action of God, always in the action of love. We just forget. And isn't there anything better than, there isn't anything better than just feeling that love, feeling that love for self, which is love for God. Feeling that love for others, which is love for God, spirit, whatever you want to call this beautiful source energy. So our next practice we're going to do is a meditation on love. Followed by a song about love. So let's find that quiet space one more time. Breathing in the presence. As we know it. The feeling of that breath within, circulating through our inner being. And just say to yourself, I am open to receiving love. And say to yourself, I am ready to receive love. And I am ready to accept the truth that I am indeed loving and lovable. Yes, the presence of spirit awakens in me the awareness that love is unconditional. I recognize the love that already is, divine love. This divine presence within me is everlasting love. The action of love is expressed in my world. I am in the flow of divine love. Nothing can take love from me or keep it out of my heart. Love enters freely. I came into this world to love and I am loving. I express my love for all simply because I live and I am one with life. 
Love binds me to all of creation. I find fulfillment through loving. I accept love as my truth. I feel love. I express love. I am loved. I am loving. I am lovable. I am love. So finding our way from this loving feeling into the breath, into bigger, beautiful, life-giving breaths, filling ourselves up fully with that breath. Let's open our eyes and all say together, I am love. Let's do that one more time. I am love. Wait, one more time. I want to see it. I am love. Thank you. I felt that love. I really did. You know, there's a, there's a theme here, and I read your notes for it, and finds you to all different things. And I was listening to it. Can I talk to you? Break it. Um, so uh, I was listening to NPR Friday, and I had a side story about a psychiatrist. And they interviewed a woman who, who um, studies plants, and she talked about how plants have. Uh, a certain kind of intelligence. They communicate with each other. They seem to be able to draw uh, animal particular predators, and there's all kinds of things. And and she finished the the interview by just saying, you know, we're surrounded by this intelligence. And I was driving along on 287, and I just and I looked and I saw the trees and the plants and the leaves on the side of the road, and I just felt this feeling of this gigantic. Feeling, I guess it was almost a Satori experience where I just, you know, I, I felt like I just walk around not even, you know, being aware of this place, but it's everywhere. And it's what we talk about. It's what the invocation is all about. This is only one thing, and it is constantly moving in waves, trying to cross all things. And here we are, you know, so here's the song. There's a reason for the sunshine today is there's a reason why the snow so high must be the season. Love that shines all around us. So that the feeling that you keep inside the empty feeling. Why you block and hide the golden feeling. Through the morning time and with your love. Oh, but you not so Back in mouth and shame And let your love grow And some of the things I'll let you know show You know what I need To get the season Oh, but you love Like a bird on the wind And let your love find you All oh, that you do Let your love shine You know what I mean Thank you. 
I love that song. You know, it's so interesting. I think it's from, well, like when we were in high school. But I didn't learn about it until about 10 years ago when a friend of mine played it. And I, no, it's a one, uh, Bellamy, 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 Bellamy Brothers, Brothers. And I think that's probably the only thing they ever did. <laughs> I don't know. Was it a one hit wonder? I don't know. So, um, yeah. So the final pathway that we are here to talk about is awakening to life. And that's just what Reverend Rich did on that drive listening to NPR. I thank you for that story because that's what it's about. It's about really recognizing life as it is, what it is, that flow of it's a miracle. And in fact, I started reading a little bit of um, physics, quantum physics, trying to make sense when people say, you know, when you're in this teaching, people say, well, why, how? Do you think we'll ever really know from that first moment of conception or perception how? But people are studying all the time and they've come to this agreement. Um, they disagree about certain things, but there's this agreement in the quantum physics field that there is one principle, one consciousness that is the creative the creative force, one. And that creative force is in everything, thus it's part of us, which is the non-spiritual version, but it's all the same. Um, so thank you for sharing that, Reverend Rich. That was very wonderful. So this is exactly what we are gonna do right now. And you, can, you have your pen and pencil. And I was going to put a blank piece of paper in there, and I forgot. So you can write on the borders, or you can just think this. So. When we pay attention, as Rich did, and, and that song just serendip or that um, talk serendipitously came on the radio, we notice and we receive miracles in life. So I want you just for a moment to think to yourself, I am open to noticing and receiving the miracles of life. Just think it. I am open to noticing and receiving the miracles of life. And then I just want you to write down, because I know you have them, and this is bringing awareness to them. What miracles have you experienced or are you experiencing in life as life right now? Life is a miracle. I think about the miracle of birth. The miracle of our bodies, how they work in perfect order. just think it's important to recognize all the miracles around us. Sometimes we take them for granted. 
the miracle of the pen in your hand. It was a divine idea. The miracle of flight. And so thank you for that. I want to share with you my miracle story because it's very powerful. And it has to do with childbirth. So if you don't like the uh, notion of anything that's a little, mm, you might want to do this. But I promise I won't make it too graphic. I can start at this point where you don't need to know all that stuff. Okay, good. So my daughter and I were in the process of delivering her. And I went, I passed out from something that you don't need to understand. And she went into cardiac arrest. While I was passed out, probably, or was I hallucinating, maybe, not. My grandmother Rose came to me very vividly. And Susabella, everything will be okay. And it, and they were about to wheel me in for a C-section, which at that time I was a little judgmental about that. But I had to have a C-section. So they all in a hurry, start rolling the cart out. And before they can get it out the door, a big doctor, gorgeous man with dark hair, little round, but strong, he comes running in and he does what's called in utero CPR. I won't describe it. But long story short, my daughter's heart started beating. They decided they could wait. And I didn't have to have a C-section. That's not the miracle. My husband and my father were in the room. So this is a story that is true. So the next day I'm holding my baby, Rose, Alexandra Rose. I named her after my grandmother. And I said, I want to thank the doctor that came in and did the CPR on my baby. And they said, what doctor? No doctor came in and did CPR on the baby. Now, if I had seen the doctor, you'd think I was hallucinating. But Richard also saw the doctor, and my father also saw the doctor, but no one else saw the doctor. Angel, maybe. Yeah. And it gives me goosebumps every time I think of it, but it also brings me back to that place of limitless potential. We don't even have a clue of everything that's around us. You know, we just don't know different levels. Some people say there's different vibrations and some thing could be going on right here. I don't know. I'm just sharing that with you because I hope it makes you open to seeing the miracles that there really are. Did you say juicy? It's juicy. Say that again? Yes. Well, juicy is one of my favorite words. Life is juicy. Yes, life is juicy. So with that being said, I'm going to do a closing treatment. But I also want to say before I do that closing treatment that we're not going to pass the plate today, but it is all about the law of circulation. It's on the back table. And if you feel guided in some way to participate in that law of giving and receiving, it is there. And those of you that are in virtual land, you can go to our website and you can use a credit card or PayPal. And I also want to sit in gratitude for a moment and say thank you for participating with me today. Um, it meant a lot to me. 
So let's close our eyes. We don't. We don't know the full. Right. Right. So if you couldn't hear what Jeffrey said, he said, we don't know who all is present here. There may be other people here amongst us. What do we know? Just being open to receive, to learn more, to experience more, to express more. So let's close our eyes. In gratitude, I stand here, two or more gathered in its name, knowing that there is only one life. And that life is the creative principle behind this day, behind this celebration, behind the music, behind the words, behind the conversation, behind the comments, behind everything. It is the one power. It is the only power. And it is love. It is life. And life is expressing itself here and now as each one that we see and each one that we can't see, each one in virtual land and beyond. It is all expression. It is all goodness. Knowing that this life is the substance of all things, the substance of all form, that life is within each of us. It circulates through us. It is ourselves. It is our inners and our outers. And that life is ever present to guide, to direct, to light the way. So each one is here feeling the practice, feeling the result of the practice, letting this practice carry them outward that they could shine their light everywhere they go, that they could see the presence of love in everyone they meet and that they can feel that the divine love is within them. This is the gift of life. This is the miracle of life. Life itself, the expression of this physical body. And there are other expressions, yes, that we know are there. We may not know what they are, but life is a miracle. And in gratitude, knowing that each one is open to accepting these miracles, to being aware of the truth, to being aware of the life that is ever present, ever circulating. With that gratitude and knowing these words are true, I release them into a law that only says yes. And we all say together, and so it is, and yes. It says right here, end live vehicle. Bye, everyone.